Hello guys, welcome to this episode of Geeking Off, where we're going to make the smallest computer I have ever built. Computers. Gaming. Retro gear. Devices. Tech reviews. And more. Geeking Off with Android. Alright, what do we got here? We got the case and some parts over here in this box, and then the motherboard and RAM over here. Now, this motherboard is an Azeroc Q1900DC ITX. It is a DC powered motherboard. Um, see here from the specs, it's got a quad core 2 gigahertz processor in it. We've got a, it's mini it, um, ITX, um, DDR3 133, um, of course it's got PCIe, um, Intel 7 generation um, graphics. I'm kind of curious to see how that plays because I could probably turn this into a mini Steam box, which is part of the experiment I'm going to do with this machine. Um, let's see, we got, of course, some LAN, um, SATA ports. It's got um, two SATA, yes, SATA 3 and SATA 2, um, and USB 3.0 and 2.0, um, two in the front, two in the rear. <clears throat> That's what she said. Okay. Go ahead and open this up. And inside here, we've got, of course, the RAM, which I got eight gigabytes for this. Um, a manual. A driver CD, which we're not gonna need because, you know me, it's gonna be a Linux machine. Um, you know, it's a little instruction sheet telling you if you're gonna use one RAM stick, which slot to put it into. I.O. shield. Um, I think we get two of these. We two of these um, power cables for your, your drives. Um, and of course a cable. A little mini screw. Not sure what that's about yet. And then here we've got the meat and bones. <clears throat> okay. Go ahead and get into this. Oh, that's a really tiny board. This is my hand. Um, this is where the RAM's gonna go. We've got a little port here for installing um, built-in Wi-Fi if you want to put it in there. Um, of course, the PCI slot, the uh, home mini. And then the power for the four SATA ports, parallel printer port, um, the front panel USB area, um, CPU fan over here, and then, of course, the built-in, the processor's built in with the heatsink, no fan. It's supposed to be a fanless system. And of course, in the back, we get three different ways of connecting video. We got HDMI, DVI, and of course, VGA. Um, there's the two 3.0 and the 2.0, um, LAN port, integrated audio, and the best part is it still has some good old PS2 ports, and of course, the DC power input location. We've got a Kingston 120 gigabyte SSD to install in this bad boy. The DC power supply. I'm hoping this is the right one because this is what was recommended on the Amazon site. It does meet the requirements of the, this is just 12 volts. So it does meet the requirements. Some other board I believe is like nine to 16. There we go. Goes out of my way. Take it out of the plastic and see what it looks like. Oh wow, about the same size as the board. The board might be a tight fit in there. Here's the front, you just get a power switch. And from what I understand, let me figure out how to do this. We're supposed to, the front USBs are supposed to be hidden under the front here. Ah, it just slides off, okay. Lift, after you slide it, okay, slide, lift, how does that work? Ah, like that. There we go. Okay, there we go. And that just pops off and there's the faceplate. Behind the faceplate, of course, is where the power button 
as and a couple of jumpers it looks like and then two of the front USBs where you can put your wireless mouse or if you want to expand the SSD storage you can put another you know USB drive there. Okay. That's off from there. Take that off. Okay, and of course we got cables for power switch, power LED, and USB inside of it. It's going to go in here like this. Pop that in there. There we go. IO Shield is installed. Ooh, it's an interesting fit. Kind of slide it in there like that. Push it back into the IO Shield. Let's go ahead and start buttoning her down here. Here. So four screws to put this board in. That is really nice. Which we have eight gigabytes. This board can support up to 16, but this is my first tester model. And like I said, I'm going to try it as an entertainment center on the TV to get started. So that's why I like the HDMI in this thing. We just pull these down, insert our chips until they click. Clicked. And that one clicked. Good, nice fit right there. Power LED, positive and negative. And then we have power button, positive and negative there. That was probably simple because usually I hate this part of any build is putting these things in there. And this one only has two and they're real simple. I like that simplicity. Go ahead and plug in our USBs in the board. Oh. Really wish I would have put the RAM in app before this, but the only problem now is I have this kind of long length here. I'm going to see if there's one further on the board. No, it's HD audio. That won't work. So we'll just kind of tuck her under there like that. So let's go ahead and unplastic the uh, SSD. Okay. Man, it's packaging. One of those kind of packaging where it's just overkill. And there we go. Alright, there's our SSD. Include, oh, it comes with two of them. Cool, I got a spare. I could actually put two SSDs in it because I bought <clears throat> an accidental one of these. I could actually install two SSDs in here for expandability in the future, which I might do that. If but, like I said, it's going to be a media center, so most of the files will be networked to it, so it's not going to be a big issue there. Cut up, plugged in. And they're working. Okay, those were the right ones. The thing I don't know about is where that power cable is going to get pinched down there. Kind of a design flaw there. got it in there. We just need to figure out what we're going to do with all this excess cable here in a minute. Go ahead and some there. And it down. Go ahead and reinstall our screws from the top. There we go. There we go. Sliding up, sliding up. Is there anything gonna post on the screen? Oh, oh, no boot device. This is a good sign. Not sure if it'll boot from the USB by default. I actually don't have a VCAT keyboard and mouse hooked up yet, but those keyboard and mouse will go in there. Oh, it's, we've got something. Um, looks like that's a good sign. I don't have a keyboard and mouse hooked up. 
kind of show you what I'm going for here. So down here, as you can see, this is where the Xbox PlayStation 360 I'm going. I'm thinking about it. it's going to go in the Xbox slot. I'm going to get rid of the Xbox because I just don't use it. It's like we've got a mouse cursor. And this big thing can be replaced because it's just the fans are loud, it's loud. And looks like we're at a desktop now. Now the test for this bad boy would be to see how YouTube's going to run on it. Oh, I guess that would be useful to plug the uh, Ethernet cable into it. Okay, get out of here. All right. Then get it in here one handedly. Okay, plug in. Looks like it's looking for the network. It says we're connected. Oh, no, maybe we're getting something. Not getting any audio. Why? It's playing it. I think it looks okay. The HD looks really beautiful. Took it a while to load. This must be one slow USB stick. Of course, it's an old 2 gigabyte one. Finally, 30 minutes later, it's getting close to the end of the installation. We finally see how fast this thing is once it boots off the SSD. Let's go ahead and power it on. Power it on. See how long this takes to boot up. Hmm. Hey, you can see me. Okay, it's posted. And we're loaded. Wow, that was really, really fast. Now let's try this YouTube test we tried or wanted to try earlier. It's not an HD yet, but let's go ahead and open up the stats for nerds. But I think I need to update Firefox because, as you can see here, still running in 30 frames per second mode. Um, I think that's only a Chromium thing, but the video is running very smoothly. So it's only dropped about 24 frames so far. But I'm going to go install Google Chrome and we'll see if we can get some better performance here. Well, it looks like I got it to do 60 frames per second. Feels a little sluggish, but it isn't too bad. It's definitely watchable. So yeah, it works. Um, in a minute here, let me stop it. Stop this. Okay. What I don't want to see here is how warm this is getting. It's warm, but it is, I can touch it. It's not too hot. So I'm going to try buttoning this up and getting it into the entertainment center now. All right, it is all done. There it is, all buttoned up and put back, put together. Very small form factor. It's going to be perfect in place of the Xbox. Yep, yep, yep. And I moved the uh, receivers for the um, wireless mouse and keyboard to the front. So now um, all my USB ports in the back are free for other things. Well, there we go. I've got it installed. It's all ready to go. There it is down there. About the size of the Wii, a little bit bigger. It'll be perfect. And then I can figure out what I'm going to do with that monster hiding back there. I still got to copy some files off of it and get it on here. But pretty much all good to go. All right. So it has been about um, three weeks of using the mini PC as a media center device to watch YouTube and blogs like this guy right here who likes to hug ponies. <clears throat> um, what I added to it is I got rid of the mouse down here. This keyboard's got a touch one, but I wanted something that felt like a remote. And I found this um, presenter like mouse, ball mouse. So you got your ball here um, and your clicker here and then right click here. And believe it or not, these buttons work and in Linux, this just opens up the web browser, this opens up the computer, and this opens up the email program. So I'm actually very surprised about that. So with that, you get an ultimate um, computer experience, and you hit the trigger underneath <coughs> to click, and there we go. We've got a nice way to watch our YouTube videos. Um, the only problem I had with um, Ubuntu Mate was 
<clears throat> under default it did a lot of screen tearing and to fix that I had to install uh, I think it was called compass and that fixed my screen tearing issue it didn't fix it a hundred percent but it does help about 95% of it and makes it run very smoothly so I'm gonna sit here and enjoy some YouTube videos with my laser pointer mouse um, and enjoy this. So this is Anthony from Anthony and from this time and every time on folks, keep on clicking.